perusing the interweb, that interweb thing the other, the other day. I spent a lot of time on Facebook, and um, I admit it, I'm a Facebook addict. I don't like checking people's statuses. I just like playing the games. Um, but um, some reason, on my internet connections, my homepage used to be Google. It used to be the first thing that comes up, Google. Now Bing has replaced I hate Bing. Google and MSN. Yeah, I don't know if I like it or not yet. But they got an interesting news feed that, that shows up. And recently, they have just unveiled, this is, I don't know if you've heard of this. I've heard of it. They've unveiled a giant statue of Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, yep. I mean, the thing is huge. And the pictures of people are this small compared to the statue. A huge monument. It's a good thing. You ask people about Martin Luther King, he is a person that needs to have a monument. He is a person that needs to be memorialized. We ask, so yes, he's got a monument. Then we ask people what Martin Luther King Jr. did, and they'll be tell you off the spot. They can tell you exactly who he was and what he did and how he died and how he was an influential, influential person in American history. I started thinking about other monuments out there and other memorials I've seen. You got the Lincoln Memorial. Everybody in America knows what the Lincoln Memorial stands for, right? Everybody in America knows who Abraham Lincoln was and what he did for this country. Freeing the slaves, being the, the president during the Civil War, awesome. Then we have the Washington Monument, a giant spike stuck in the middle <laughs> of Washington, D.C., literally in the middle of Washington, D.C. And we know where Washington, why we have the Washington Monument. There's no picture of George Washington on this. It's not his face like we have in the Martin Luther King Memorial or even there's no huge statue of him, but we know what that monument stands for. It stands for more than just the president. It stands for a country, the first president of the United States of America. So we know what these are for. There are people who deserve monuments made out. Not made out of them, made <laughs> for them. Washington was a very tall man. I catch myself on my own. I learned how to do that. But in Simpsonville, South Carolina, anybody know where that is? Besides in no, South Carolina? No, I don't think so. Nobody here at least. I know where it is because I live there. I would walk around town. And there's a statue. It's a really cool statue. It's not this older guy. He's got a mustache and one hand. He's wearing a nice jacket, suit kind of thing. I don't remember if he's wearing a tie or not. But in one hand, he's got a doctor's bag. And in his other hand, he's smoking a cigar. And there's a plaque there. And it said he was, I don't, I, I don't know what his name was, but his name was Dr. something. So I called him Doc. Let's just call him Doc. And he was the first mayor of Simpsonville, South Carolina. Apparently he did well. He did some good things. He was an important enough person that they made a statue for him. However, if you ask anybody in Simpsonville, South Carolina, what that statue is all about. I don't think you'll have the same response. I don't think some people would know. I didn't know. I'd lived there for three years. I had no idea who he was or why they built a statue out of him. Why they built a statue for him <laughs> to try to having problems. I, I apologize. We're, we're, we won't edit those. We'll just keep those on podcast. It's fine. Um, so I guess the point is, there are people in this world who have lived such magnificent lives 
and such amazing, and done, been part of some amazing events and, and, and structures that everybody will remember them for history and for all time. And they are the ones we carve their faces on the side of mountains. We are the ones, they are the ones we build buildings just for them. And I have no other purpose other than to say, boom, this is an important person in history. History, We need to remember them. But then there are those people who do good things and are kind of important to smaller groups of people. And they are the ones we just erect a statue for. No explanation, and people will soon forget who they are. The difference between a statue and a monument is how important they were in the history of the world. We've been talking about the life of King David. Well, he hasn't been king yet. We haven't gotten there yet. But we've been talking about a little shepherd boy who grew into the kind of person that a nation has been defined by. The kind of person they would erect more than just a statue for. But they would build monuments. And maybe not monuments in the, as we know them today, but monuments as in written, that are written contained in a book that has lasted for centuries. I'm in a contemplative mood tonight, so this may not be an all-off, knock-off, knock-your-socks-off sermon. This may not even be a, a good talk for you to remember, but you know, we're going to look at some of the life, some things of David. I'm, when, when you listen, when you hear about David, when you hear the name David, King David, there's one phrase that always pops up. One phrase that always pops up. Not giant killer, although he was a giant killer. Not the greatest king of all Israel history, although he was the greatest king of all of Israel's history. And not even shepherd guy, great shepherd, although he was a great shepherd. But the way, phrase that always comes up, and I have to find this, because it doesn't actually connect, and his name's not involved when it first mentioned, but it comes in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. When Samuel rejected Saul as king, he comes up and he says to this, he says, but now your kingdom will not endure, says that to Saul. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. The phrase everybody talks about when they talk about David is he was a man after God's own heart. Wow. Can you imagine that? If we wanted to, if we really want to delve deep into what the heart of God is all about, and who and how does that react to people? How does God react to this world? What is the pathos of God? What is He passionate about? What does He care about? What is He as a person? What is God's heart like? He says, "You look at David." Because I have already found a man after my own heart. He was telling Saul, you're being replaced and I've already found him. And we go back a couple, three weeks ago when we look at David being chosen by Samuel. Poor little ruddy old shepherd boy, youngest of the flock. And that is the person. <laughs> Not the greatest, not the biggest, not the best. Just a small, insignificant little boy. Wow. And the next thing we see, 
we, 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 next thing we see of David, we hear the story of, that Matt so eloquently talked about last week of how he killed a giant. There are a couple things that we can look at about being a man after God's own heart. A man after God's own heart. And we look at it, we hear the story last week, we hear the story how he faced the giant and he stood in faith because he was certain that God would be victorious. He was sure. He wasn't... Well, maybe God will bring him down. <laughs> well, maybe. Just, oh, kind of. I go out there and sure. I mean, I, I volunteer for a lot of things half-heartedly. <laughs> it's like, hey, Harry, you want to do this? Sure. <laughs> Why not? Who else is going to do it? But when faced with a giant, David was wondering why nobody was out there in the first place. Our God has given us victory. Our God has said for certain that there is no stopping him, that his people will overcome the Philistines. And this big guy, the world's tallest midget, is just in the way. I don't... He's insignificant. David showed no fear. God gave him a heart that was fearless. Wow.